Okay, so in Paris with you, um, what do you notice about it? Well, the whole poem? Yeah. Um, on a structural point, the immediate bit that sticks out is this indented stanza. Yeah. Do mine, yeah. if we do not go to the Louvre. And that's um, a very negative stanza. Go on. It's the stanza where he says what he wants to do. If you, and then it's almost like a proposition. If, a, if you say, doing this and that, to mm. what and whom, learning who you are, who you are, learning what I am. It's almost yeah. like he's proposing, I assume, activities, very sexual activities to her. Yes. And then perhaps she started talking of love again. It's the only one that doesn't start, um, don't talk to me of love, other yes. than this one up here. Yeah. So perhaps she's ignored him or turned him down, she's rejected him. Well, do we imagine in that gap between lines nine and where, yes. where she's yes. then spoken about I think, love? I think there's a lot of how um, he's replying to like, yes, I am angry at the way yes. I'm It's almost like she's quizzed him about it. And yes. do you mind if we do not go to the... Like, I think the italics here could suggest like she's make, making fun making fun of her, perhaps she said, oh, can we go to the Louvre? He he said, do you mind if we do not go to yeah. the Louvre? It's emphasised they're not there. So it sounds more like an argument than it, a love poem, doesn't it? It isn't. Yeah, I think I think so. So if we whiz down to the end, has he triumphed in seducing her, or is she ultimately turned off by the turn? Um, well, in the stanza just before the end, we, we can see that they're on the bed, they're on the bed, uh, a little bit of Paris and now view, there's that crack across the ceiling. Yes. They're obviously looking at the ceiling, so they have to be lying yeah. down. So perhaps it's a cheap hotel room where that's the only furniture. All we could take right. is they're actually on the bed looking up. Maybe he's slightly getting his way. So, well, pr presumably yeah. they've had sex already, haven't they? You Do you think? Perhaps. Perhaps. I'm not sure. Perhaps they've had sex and she is talking about love and he has yes. become angry. He he thought it was just a sexual relationship and she's hinted at more than that. Yeah, that's possible, isn't it? But then when we look at the last verse, it appears completely obsessed with the lover. Yes. I'm in Paris with the slightest thing you do, you know. The slightest, anything at all attracts me to you. Yeah. With your eyes, your mouth. Now it's suddenly a conventional love poem. Well, perhaps he's realised that his forceful and slightly domineering tactics to mm. get her to have sex with him, yes, or him to have sex with him, is uh, is really not working. And perhaps he's he's trying a more softer, more romantic approach. You know, I'm in Paris right. with your eyes and your mouth. But then he changes so tone completely. Yeah. yeah, with the all point south, south joke. Um, am I embarrassing you? Is there a power relationship going on here? Is he enjoying embarrassing well, oh, the Well, he definitely likes to feel he's in power. If you look, all of these are commands. In, don't talk yes. to me of love. Uh, is, is the, the first word is don't. It's yes. A, it's a very commanding word. And, uh, well, he's obviously drunk. Oh, if, well, go on. What's your evidence that he's drunk? Well, I'm a hostage. I'm marooned. And he's making the Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think... That bamboozled. I, the, I guess I'm angry at the way I've been bamboozled. But the, that's a very silly word to use, really. It's right. obviously very deliberate by James Fenton. You could also take it because you've got the word booze in it as well. Yeah, you've got the word booze in it. And um, but bamboozled is is a very specific word that he means he's been tricked. Yes. You know, he's he's portraying himself as he wasn't the guilty one in this relationship. Perhaps in the in, in the previous in the previous relationship. Yeah. Um, she, we, we maybe like get the idea that she was the one that has done badly to him. But that's the previous because, relationship. Yeah, that though, is the it? previous yeah. relationship. And it, it, I'm on the rebound. Yeah. I don't care where are we bound. And, and it, he's got his words muddled up here. It's not where we are bound. Yes. It's where are we bound. I think that's still suggestive of his drunkenness. Yeah, and the the, the word order actually suggests yeah. that he's now asking a question. Yeah. Where are we bound? Doesn't doesn't it? Yeah. As though his subconscious desire is leaking through. 
Yeah. So he actually wants this relationship to work out, even as he's pretending he doesn't care. Yes. Yes, perhaps. Okay. Um, is this written entirely for a lover and therefore a private poem, or are we supposed as a public audience to respond to it and, and take a view on him? Well, I think so. I think at the bottom stanza, the final stanza, there's a very clear direct address to the audience. I Go think, on. am I embarrassing you? Oh, right, it's so not just not the lover, this is the reader. The lover. This is a address to the audience. This is poem so much of an embarrassment. Jess? You were doing a video. Thanks, though. No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, go on, he's deliberately embarrassing the reader. Yeah, he's deliberate. He's trying. Well, he's obviously trying to get a reaction, whether that's... He wants people... I think he deliberately wants people to really dislike this character. Right. He wants people to know how horrible he is being. Perhaps this has happened to him. Perhaps he's been... He is the lover in this situation. Oh, I see. Uh, so he's the recipient of this aggressive yeah. behaviour. Um, that's an interesting kind of revenge, isn't it? Would the, yeah. would, would the person who behaved to him this way recognise themselves in the poem? Is that part of its purpose? Well, I think so. I think, well, it's very direct. I mean, it, She's in Paris. He's in Paris with him. Yeah. I mean, it's not often that someone will take someone off on the rebound in to Paris on right. a trip. So I think it is directed at him. It's almost. Uh, it's got a lot of spite in this poem. I think uh, the way he portrays the this lover. Well, I'm going to argue that it's quite comic in a minute. So I'm interested in that. Tell me, where's the spite? Um, well, he, well, he obviously portrays him as a very nasty person, very negative. Everything he says is don't. Yes, it is. You're it absolutely is, right. He is angry, but but look, he starts to portray him here as something. So he, maybe he was the person that was tricked. Maybe this represents how he was. This lover was feeling. I he see. was thinking. Perhaps he was right. Perhaps yeah. it wasn't his fault in the last relationship, and but. And then you take this, and I don't care where are we bound. He's taken something that made us think perhaps it wasn't his fault. And then he's he's written down that he said he doesn't care what happens in their relationship. Mm. Whether he actually means that, what, like what we discussed earlier. Yeah. He's But he has written down something that is, puts the person in a very negative light immediately after the only thing that could yeah. have saved his personality. And he focuses on the hotel as... Particularly yeah. sleazy, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, which could represent the relationship. Um, and, of course, we've got this um, slight problem in that Fenton's a homosexual poet, and now is this a universal poem about lovers, or is it about a specific homosexual relationship? And we've been talking about the lover as a female, but I've noticed this line here. If we say sod off to sodding Notre Dame, we've got that repetition, the repetition of sod... sod. Which seems to say, oh, hang on, this is this is a gay love poem. Convinced by that, or is there a problem with it? No, I think it's a, I think it's a gay. Love. A lot of masculine imagery. It's a, because he's also a, quite a big war poet, isn't he, James Clinton? Go on. And um, so he also uses a lot of war imagery. If we look in the, yeah, in the top stanza up here. All oh, right, yeah. That's the top stanza. Go for um, it. Cool. We get to hear. He's one of your talking wounded. Again, yes. another. Um, I think that's another suggestion of his drunkenness. Yes. He's obviously got it mixed up with the phrase walking wounded. Yes. He's got his words muddled. It's talking wounded. And then he's a hostage. He's marooned. All something that's that's um, very like a war. This this would be an old style of battle yes. where they'd maroon sailors. Gay imagery again. Yes. They, they'd, they'd maroon sailors that had... Um, that are either traitors or prisoners of one of us. Okay. That was a typical thing that sailors used to do. And um, if I think of, he's a hostage. He's he's marooned. It especially this word marooned. He's on his own, even though he's with this lover. Yes. He feels if he's on his own, he doesn't care about this lover. He is nothing to him. Could he, could we look at it the other way though? Um, He's marooned because he's hopelessly in love and his feelings have taken him completely by surprise. Well, I'd, I'd like to think that, but the, it's, 
in the third stanza, you get mm. the fact that he's not in love. He doesn't care who it is. Yes. He's doing this and that, which is a, quite a disgusting way to describe yeah. sexual relationships. And then, to what and whom? Whom suggests whoever it is. Yes. Uh, it, it could be you, it could be anybody. Yeah, to what and it's whom. quite ironic because it's really formal language. Yes. But it's describing a completely informal disregard for feeling. Yes. Um, and it's all about learning what I am. Yeah. So the experience is just him exploring his homosexuality, yeah. not necessarily his lover at all. Oh. Yeah, and I think it's deliberate the order this comes in. Yes. He does want to learn who he is. Who, yes. Who you are here. He does want to know that. But what's more important is learning about himself. This yeah. is an experience for himself and not anything to do with his lover. And of course, homosexuality would have been illegal probably at the time that he's writing. Um, do you think? Yeah, yeah. Cause When's, no, it wasn't. This when's it written? This would have been written... 1960s. Yeah, and that, yeah, it would have been illegal at that stage. It's born in 1947, actually. Yeah. So he would have been 13 in 1960. Mm, that's true. So maybe it isn't illegal. Frowned upon, but not illegal. Good point. Very frowned upon. Um, this is um, unlike the other poems. Seems to me one that demands to be read out loud. Don't talk to me of love, I've had an earful and I get tearful when I've downed a drink or two. I'm one of your talking wounded, I'm a hostage, I'm marooned, but I'm in Paris with you. Yes, I'm angry at the way I've been bamboozled and resentful at the mess I've been through. I admit I'm on the rebound and I don't care where a wee bound, I'm in Paris with you. Um, so if I read it that way, that refrain, but I'm in Paris with you, suddenly sounds like love. But we didn't think that when we just read the poem. So, does a does an oral reading of the poem give us a different interpretation? Perhaps, perhaps it's deliberate. Um, well, it would always be deliberate, or at least could argue that it is. Go on. And uh, perhaps he's saying that this is the obvious when you read it aloud. It's it's like reality, what was actually happening. Yes. And then when you read it in your head, you begin to go beneath the surface so perhaps he was tricked into thinking this was love right like we are if we read it aloud okay and then if we look below the surface if we read it in our heads we get the impression that it wasn't love it was something rather more malicious okay if you know what i mean um so if we think about fenton's purpose in writing does he want to distance himself from the narrator of this poem the voice of it or does he want to identify it, to identify with it? Does it represent his viewpoint? I think I think it's a revenge poem. Yeah. Personally, I I'd like to I'd like to think that he's written it as a revenge poem. But you could argue both ways. He's, he's asking it's a final kind of revenge poem. Uh, that that's the last we're going to talk, and it's yes. They're so distant now that they can't even talk directly. He's had to. Ro- write a poem about him to get his point across. Oh, OK. Yeah. And this will be the end of it. Or you could say that he's perhaps written this poem because yeah. he's been reminded of this person. Perhaps he's yeah. written this poem. And then he finishes with the the line, I'm in Paris with you, that the that line, perhaps he's not talking about the narrator. OK. Perhaps he's talking about himself. If you, we, Possibly that's overanalyzing it. But... Um, he, perhaps he still has feelings for this person. Perhaps yeah. he still really likes them. Well, I like uh, your interpretation. I hadn't considered before that the you is a direct address to the yeah. reader. And if we, if we take it that way, then the purpose of the poem is to explore homosexual love in a love poem, yeah. which many readers would find shocking and unpalatable. Yeah. And to say, well, actually, shouldn't homosexual love be treated in exactly the same way as heterosexual love? Yeah. Well, he obviously hasn't like made it obvious that it's homosexual love there's that's nothing true. in there that's really clear perhaps he's saying that homosexual love is the same it is the same as a heterosexual relationship there's no need yeah and that's why we don't have genders in the poem yeah excellent right i think we're done okay